Hi, Michael. Hi, Janet. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, very clear. So, um, how are we doing this morning? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Awesome, awesome. And um, I've been testing this uh, new software. I have a 15-day trial. And I wanted to bring in people and see how I can do so I can uh, buy this software eventually. But this is a cool feature, don't you think so? What do you think? I mean, I like the split screen. It is really cool. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Mike. I was looking at it myself, you know, because you can do the split screen, you can do more than one person, and you have those cool little banners, so it looks like your own little production studio. Yeah, right. It's like your own brand. You're branding your own stuff. You can have little uh, Michael's, you know, little logo and all you can show. You can have your own custom colors, and it's your own brand, basically. So I'm testing it. I like it. And it's so much, so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. So, uh, so before we get started, Michael, I just want to ask you a few questions. Do I know uh, we have been, how did we meet, first of all? I forgot. So do you, do you want to tell the audience how did we met? Did we I do remember when we met. I think I was speaking at uh, a local place. I was doing some of my material and I took a break in the room next door. You were doing the Indian spices demonstration. So I Oh, yes. I remember. Was it a naturally organic center? <laughs> it was. It was. And I said, wow, that's really good. And I started talking to you and uh, we've been friends ever since. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. That's good. And it's, it's, it seems like I've known you forever. And uh, uh, thanks for being staying in touch with me. And I know your book came out recently and I have been in touch with you. But I read your book and I'm very, very much impressed with your book. I mean, it's a quality book. I'm surprised that you didn't win the best New York seller prize. But... <laughs> Not yet. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get there. But, you know, a lot of people were surprised at how good it was and how much they really enjoyed it, what, what information they really got. Um, so I'm very proud of it. And anybody who's read it really loves it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So, Michael, before we start get started here, I want to ask you, how do you start your daily method of operation how do you start your mornings you know what, what i do really you... don't have like a, a routine but one thing that i have been incorporating in my life is meditation and you know i'm i'm a reiki giver i'm a, a diksha giver so i'm very familiar with... you do it you know i have a monkey mind and it's hard for me to calm down but i've really started including meditation in my daily um, daily ritual and usually it's in the morning and I've, I've read some studies recently that's really mind-blowing that when you start meditating your brain actually physically changes the the part right. that causes the stress actually kind of shrink to better thinking and clearer thinking actually increases and for me I used to be a personal trainer so the thought of like you know concrete physical evidence of doing action really you know, really triggers people like to go to the gym, you get bigger muscles or you lose weight. So this new study or not maybe a new study, but this thing that I've, I've read recently really is like, all right, I'm really going to. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. You know what? Everybody should have some kind of routine, right? Because how do you start your morning? This, the how you start your morning is how you end your evenings right so it's very important you have a daily method of operation whatever you get up you pray you meditate whatever you do you do go for a walk go to the gym and you know do you write do you have a journal do you write any things down what you did during the day do, do you journal uh, things sometimes uh, sometimes i do a lot of times when i write it's kind of like it just flows out of me you know when i was writing my book i'm working on a new book you know if i try to sit right. there and just force the words out it usually doesn't come but it's like all of a sudden I'm just taken over and, and like the words are flowing and it seems like it's not even. Right, 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 right. Awesome. So uh, I know your book, uh, do you want, you know, at the end you can talk about your new book, what book you are coming up with. And I think all the or people, the viewers, the audience would like to know. I don't see anybody come yet. Maybe it's too early for them. <laughs> it's too early for them. <laughs> Uh, but eventually they come. This will be a, re a recorded thing live, so people can see what what things are there. But uh, you moved in 1988 to Las Vegas, right, Mike? Yes, December 1998. And the funny thing is, people ask me how long I've been in Las Vegas, and I laugh 
because it was supposed to be temporary. I remember you talking about a journal. I was going to start keeping a journal of my one year in Vegas. And right. uh, it's been over 18 years that I've been here. And it doesn't seem that long. It's just mind blowing when I That's say that, that I've it's amazing. So you became the first youngest police officer at the age of 19. How, how did you feel about that? And you have been for 14 years in the poli as a police officer. So what was your, uh, what was the reaction when you first got recruited as a police officer at the age 19? Well, that's uh, one of some of the stories in my book. And that's one of them because I've had some great successes you know one being the end I had some issues and challenges I had a heart attack at age 36 I lost ten thousand dollars on a Ponzi scheme so this is a lot of where that information comes from the book these lessons that I've learned and these experiences I've had but more directly to about the police officer thing you know I was 18 when I first started you know going through the testing and everybody said I wouldn't going to college to be a lawyer, ideally. So I was studying criminal justice. I was working part-time at the supermarket. And in that town, they were hiring police officers. So I'm like, well, let me, you know, let me just try. And I kept going further and further. And still, you know, nobody believed I would get hired. I was skinny. I was six foot. Eventually, you know, they offered me the position and everybody was shocked. And so was I. So you know, in the book I wrote, write about, you know, you have to go for it. You have to go for it 100% because you never know. And if you don't give 100%, you'll never know if you could have achieved that success. And that's, you know, probably one of the biggest turning points of my life was I remember that day, the last day to have the app. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to get hired. Why bother? I had to get it notarized. I had to get a picture. And my, my friend luckily was there. Had she not been there, I never would have became a cop. And uh, I did it and I kept going farther and farther. But the most important thing was I never gave up and I gave 100%, even though I had that doubt in my mind that I'm never. That's good, Michael. Uh, you're breaking a little bit. So, Michael, I know you have done from a police officer to a stage performer to a bartender all these years in Las Vegas. What was your experience coming from New Jersey to Las Vegas? What was that like? I mean, what was it? Yeah, what was that like? You know, uh, it, it, it was really hard. It was really hard. You know, um, I always had kind of a master plan for my life. And I thought I hit the pinnacle. I thought I had everything that I wanted. It looked like I had everything that I wanted or that anybody could want. And my life just fell apart. My long-term relationship effectively ended and I just wasn't happy and I'm like I got to change things up and it was really scary and my life did a total 180 I sold everything I moved out to Las Vegas I didn't know where I was going to work I didn't have a job I didn't have any friends really and right. it was like it was really scary but I but I had to believe and this is one thing in the book about you know when you're going through tough times you have to believe that it's going to be okay in the end you're right. You're right. A lot of people. You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to believe that maybe something good is going to come from this. Even at the time, it seems like there's no possible good that can come from this. And when I came out here, eventually, you know, I've always been type of a, a anal person, a very controlling person, especially for my life. And for me to kind of go with the flow, that's not what right, I right. do. That's not reality. That's not real life. And I kind of embraced it. And once I settled right. I became an actor. I was at Star Trek, The Experience. I was in a few commercials. I was a flair bartender, dancing on the bar, flipping bottles like Tom Cruise. I mean, it was great. And all of a sudden, I realized that, you know, the things, I wouldn't want to go through what I went through. But man, you know, life has a way of just rearranging your life to make sure that you're going to have happiness. You just kind of have to believe, okay, and there's good coming your way. Right. It's, I, I read your book. It was amazing. It, it's mind blowing. Your, your book is, do you want to talk a little bit, just in brief about your book and uh, it's all your life story, what you have done uh, from um, <clears throat> a few things I read was uh, being yourself, uh, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, the few highlights you've talked about. So do, do you want to talk to the audience about your book just in a little sure. brief? I know you. Yes. 
please. Sure. Uh, this is my book. It's called Living Your Big Juicy Life, The Secrets to Having More Love, Joy, and Success. And it, is, it covers so many things. Like one of the first chapters is low self-esteem. I talk about a story, a very moving story about my father. I was in my 30s, a grown man. Again, I thought I, you know, I had the world together. And I had a talk with my father because uh, there were some instances in my childhood that I felt were still affecting me, like so many other stories from other people. And I figured that if I could get the answers from my father to understand a little bit better of what happened, then I could release it. Then I could let it go. You know, like the old thing, if you're, if you're understand, understand. And I'm like, well, now I want to under, now I want to understand I'm older. And I really had an epiphany with that, uh, with that interaction with my father that, that changed my life. And that's in the book. You know, I talk about relationships. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've been successful in a lot of areas, but man, have I really been bad at relationships. And a lot of times you just keep, it's always the other person's fault. It's always the other person that, you know, caused the problem with the relationship. And I realized that, you know, the problem is me. And I ask people, you know, it's kind of a trick question, but what's the common denominator in all your bad relationships? Right, 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 right. It's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yes. And then yes, I, I talk about a whole bunch of things that talk about the two keys to have. Right, Mike. So usually it's if I only had fill in the blank, then I could be happy. Right. A new car, bigger house, a boat, that person or that person or that job. And what happens is a lot of times we get whatever we're after. We might feel a little boost of happiness, but then we're still not happy. And in the book, I talk about the two keys. It's so quick. It's simple. You can. So that what was the inspiration, uh, Mike, to write this book? You know, in hindsight of looking at my life, like I alluded to before, I, I've had a lot of experiences. I've been very fortunate and I've had a great life. Uh, I've had a lot of ups and downs, and along the way, I really, I've always kind of been the type to look for solutions, and through my mistakes, through my experiences, I learned a lot of stuff, and, you know, through my life, I've always been good with other people, and, you know, they share with me, and, and I can help them, and I'm like, you know what, I've got some really good stuff here. I was teaching a program, I still do, it's by Mike Dooley. Uh, calling Infinite Possibilities, The Art of Changing Your Life. So I was teaching this program, and then I started to include a little bit of my own material, and people were like, wow, that is really good. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write a book. Well, every successful people write a book, and I should get there because I have great stories to share. I have great things to share. So I, the best way is to, raise, is to tell your stories or write your stories, right? And your book is really, really impressive, Mike. And uh, I, I was mind blown. I said, if Michael can do that, why can't I? You're just a person like me. You're not some famous celebrity, right? You're just like you and me, like everybody else. When you can do it, I can do it. Everybody can do that, right? Everybody has a story. Yeah, right? you know, it's Mike? funny because um, that attitude is actually correct. And in the book, my book, I write about, you know, the four minute mile. For, you know, ever since recorded time, nobody was able to break the four minute mile. They thought it couldn't be done. And I think it was 1954, Roger Bannister, he was the first person to ever break the four minute mile to be able to run a right. mile on four and done. They're recorded. But here's another thing that's even maybe more amazing is that within just two months, two more people broke that record or, you know, matched his record. So this is the thing, if you look at, you know, sports or like, for example, skateboarding. I used to ride skateboards when I was a kid. I mean, you know, maybe a 360, a little jump off a curb. <laughs> but what these guys are doing today is so mind-blowing. And have the attitude that you just said, like, hey, you're no different than I am. I'm no different than you. I'm no different than anybody who is successful in whatever they're doing that I want to be like. I can do it. You know, what I write, I write in my book or one of my sayings is what can happen for one can happen for all. And what it is, is what you would just said, said, hey, I can do a powerful mindset. Right, 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 right. So, Michael, we have a few people here online. Do you want to say hello to them? I have Wendy here. Wendy, hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. And Edward, you 
then I have Edward here. And uh, Wendy, do you want to say where are you from? Or say in the comments, Edward, where are you from in the comments? So, and if you have any questions for Michael, he will answer at the end of the session here after interview. So please put in your comments and we will answer as we go. So, um, so next question for you, Mike, here is that, uh, uh, what is your advice for people here? Because sometimes people come with a negative mindset. I can't afford. It's too expensive. Um, uh, that is not my thing. Uh, then they would say, um, I can't afford. Um, I have no money. So that kind of mindset mentality, I have no, no time. What would you advise to these people who have always this negative mindset? Mindset. Oh, that's a great question. And really what it is, is, is your mindset and your beliefs, because your beliefs are the foundation of everything that's going to happen in your, your emotions, the way you react, everything. So yeah. if you start off with a negative belief or a limiting belief, I mean, how do you think that's going to play out? You know, right, so right. what you have to do is really, you know, trace down everything to uh, where those negative beliefs are coming from. And this is the illusion, though. We think that, you know, it's a, it's a higher level. Right. Like in relationships, I talk about things that, that I experienced that, for example, one of them was I used to get very upset if my partner was late. So right. what would happen is I would react strongly to that, thinking that I was justified. Well, they're an adult. They have a car. They have a watch. Why can't they be there on time? I don't deserve this. And then I would react strongly. The issue was, is that it was an accident. What it was, was the way I interpreted it. And the way that I interpreted it was that, what does it say about me if the person who cares about me the most in a romantic relationship is late? Right. That must mean that they don't value my time. If they right. don't value my time, that must mean that I'm not worthy. I'm unlovable. So right. where that reaction was coming from was the pain of feeling like I was unlovable. So that's right. why I overreacted in, in many situations. So to your question about how can you, I guess, be successful in more areas in your life, no matter what you want, is kind of maybe challenge your negative or limiting beliefs. Like true, or is it just maybe an excuse? I don't have enough money. Do you find money for other things? Uh, if your life depended on it, could you, you know, do a lot of these things that you want to do? So it's a matter of taking a look at your excuses and going deeper and seeing if there's a root cause. Some people are afraid of success, and that's, you know, that's actually very common. Are you afraid of getting what you want? Well, but you really have to start digging deeper and seeing what's underneath these excuses. Right, right. Thank you. That was a great, great answer, Mike. And uh, we all have a why. So what is your why, Mike? I know this is out of your question here. So what drives you every day? What is your why? For me, my why you know, is my a, kid. So what is your why, Mike? Uh, my why is, is to be happy, is to be happy every day. And me. And sometimes it changes, you know, and that's okay. And this is another thing that, you know, in life, you know, we think that everything has to be a certain way. And that's the way that I live my life. You know, I, I had to have all my ducks in a row. This needs to go in this box and the square peg needs to go in the square hole. And and that's not life, you know. So it's, it's a matter of like, deal with that. You know, a, a program I taught it was called How to Be Authentic. And this right. is what people really struggle with. They're like, ah, oh, I need to be more authentic. Right. And it's kind of a trick question because um, you are always authentic. You know, exactly. what happens is a lot of people, you know, they might do something or say something that, that doesn't really feel good to them. And what they do is they try to disown that. You know, I did right. that, but that's not really me. I always you. You can never be anything but you. The issue yeah. is when people say I need to be or want to be more authentic, what they're saying is they want to be more of their higher self, of their highest self. And right. once you understand that, you can have the contrast of where you are right now and where you want to be. Right. Awareness often to be happier than ever before. Right. 
Well, oh, that was a good, good answer. Thank you, Mike. Yes, why? They say that your why should be strong enough to make you cry, right? You have to have the reason behind your why. So that was cool. There's so, one, one thing I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead, Mike. There's a chapter in my book that I didn't put the two keys to achieving anything you desire. And the why was the whole key of it. Because the right. why will give you the leverage to overcome your fears, to overcome your excuses, to overcome your obstacles. The why is everything, you know, because right. you could be like analytical and it looks good on paper. And but you need the why. The why is the engine. The why is the, the gunpowder to get you started. And the why is the one. Like if you you know decided to get back in shape and all of a sudden you're, you're not anymore, tap back yes. into the why. Go back to those feelings when you originally started because if it was enough to get you started in the beginning, it'll probably right. be enough to keep you going. Right, right. That's 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 a good answer. Thanks, Mike, for answering that. My, uh, Mike, what would be what would be your advice on getting setting your goals and taking action? So, what would you advise people on setting your goals? and taking action so one of the first things is is you really need to know where you're going you know the the interesting thing about most people uh is they don't really know you know like oh you know what do you want in your life or you know sounds kind of cliche where do you see yourself in a year or 10 years and a lot of people don't know they're like well i haven't thought of that in a while right. and if you're not clear on where you want to be in your life and where you want to go and who you want to be you right. kind of drift through life. Right. And when you do that, that's how you end up in bad relationships for extended periods. You end up in dead end jobs that you've been there. So you really, in my book, I call it a happiness checkup. So right. take a look at your life and say, you know, look at the different areas in your life. Is this working for me? Am I happy here? Am I happy in my relationship, my job, where I'm living, my hobbies, my friends, everything? And just be honest with yourself and say, hey, is what happens is like they'll settle for like, well, this is as good as it's going to get or I can't really change anything. And that's all bull. But the first thing is to say, be honest with yourself and say, am I happy here? If you're not. All right. Now yeah. you can change it because you can change anything and everything in your life. That's good. Thank you, Mike. Another question is that we ha all have a breakthrough moment. What was your breakthrough moment in your life? So, when you know, you got out of your breakthrough moment. So, what was your breakthrough moment? So, so you can share with people. And I I've had several. Yes, I've had ahead. several. I think one of the, one of the ones was with my father. Uh, right. Again, I alluded to it before. Yeah, I talked to my father. I said, you know, why was this? Why was that? Why did this happen? This really hurt me. Why did you do that? You know, why right. was that going? Like this big epiphany. I remember specifically it was that I really always felt like I was never enough. And I realized right. that my father had never said that, you know, you're enough. What happened when I was a child that set me up to be an overachiever? I had straight A's until eighth grade. I was student of the year twice. I was Olympics right. of the mind. I was in gift achiever. Um, and this kind of followed me in some areas of my life. And, you know, again, I was a grown man in my 30s. I was a police officer. And I just yeah. I had a breakdown. And right. in a conversation with my father, I said, you know, I wonder if he tells me that I'm enough. I think that'll be the key. I think that changed my life like this anymore. And in the book, I tell the story, but he ends up telling me that. And it was like a firecracker that you lit and it didn't go off. It was like a dud. I'm like, nothing happened. There wasn't this big miraculous release that I was expecting. And it right. was a turning point in my life because I realized at that point, that it was up to me. It, it was going to be me that was going to release it. It didn't matter, you know, for other people. I, I you know it doesn't beliefs or whatever. It doesn't matter where they came from, because you're an adult now and you have the power and you have the capacity to understand. So you don't have to go back to the root. You know, this is a big thing that that people think you have to go back to the root and solve it at the root with that person or whatever. And that's not right. true. And the only right. this is the way that you go after this. It changes the way that you try to attack that issue. And the good news right. is you can because you're in control of it. 
Right, 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 right. Thank you. That was a great, great, great advice for people. So, Mike, what is your one giveaway to the fans and your audience from uh, from this whole thing? So, what would we give one piece of advice you would like to give your fans or your viewers? What would that be like? Uh, there's a whole bunch that I would like to give, but this is one thing that I do with uh, about happiness. Yes. Is uh, it's a police term actually? I learned it from being a police officer. It's called being systematically unsystematic. And what that meant in police work is that you didn't want to do the same thing every day. You didn't want to sit uh, at the same time. You didn't want to eat at the right. same place because the theory was that you know people would uh, would see that uh, they would be comfortable with that. They could plan the crimes knowing that you're at a certain place. Right. But I tell people to apply that to their everyday life because what happens is many people were creatures of habit. We go to the same right. restaurant, we go to the same dog park, we same, go to the same coffee store. And what happens is it, it change things up. So systematically right. unsystematic means that whatever your habits are, change them. Once a week, go to a different coffee place. Once a week, go to a different supermarket. Once a week, go to a different restaurant. Take a different way home from work. You have right. to change up your life. Because right. once you change things, all of a sudden the universe puts people, places, and things in your life that are new. You know, like people say, hi, Dave. Hey, how are you? Go to a place where they don't know you. Go to a place where you have to introduce yourself. Go to a place where you're going to see new faces. So it's so simple, but, man, that much makes a big difference in your life. Plus, you feel like you're more in control, you know, because you're yeah. seeing new things. You're having new experiences, and happiness is right 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 so uh, so uh, we have some viewers here so Wendy do you have questions uh, now it's time for Q&A so anybody would like to ask a question this is a time to pop in or just leave a comment here so Mike can answer those questions does anybody has questions Edward Wendy do you have any questions if you have questions just type in the Facebook comment here so I can ask Mike uh, if you're here. So can you hear me, guys? If there are any questions for Mike, so he can answer right now because this is the time. So in the meantime, you can type in your comments here. And Mike, I want to know where can if people want to buy your book? Where is it available? Can you send a link? Can you type your link here? Is that a way for you to type your link? Yeah, let me try it. It's available on Amazon.Quebec, or you can get it as a Kindle version. It's also available right. on my website. You can get a, um, a signed copy. Also, you get a wristband that says, I love my big, juicy life. Those are really uh -huh. fun. It's like an anchor for you to go through your day and, and uh, tap back into your power and your happiness. Let me right. see if I can go ahead and, and type in uh, the website. Yeah, can you type in the website if you don't mind? So people know where to find you, find your book. Uh, I, I was very impressed with the book. I have learned a lot of things. I think I have a question here. Uh, okay, you typed in. Okay, that's cool. Hopefully people can see that. Uh, Okay. Can people see that, Wendy? Edward, can you see the book? So if you want, if you're interested in this book, go online on Amazon and you can find the book. It's a great book. It's worth it. If you don't know where you are and where you want to be, this is a great book to get you to get you started and to accomplish your goals. So uh, is there a way to set your goals every day, Mike? I mean, would you like to tell the viewers? Is there a certain way you set your goals and you, you would like to tell the people here? I mean, well, it's a matter of like being clear. You know, we talked a, bit, a little bit before about, you know, being clear about what you want in tap. Right. So you don't have to go overboard. And this is, you know, one of the things that, that happens to a lot of people is they have this goal, which is great. And it's pretty much uh, many times it's pretty far from where they currently are. And that's right. not a problem. That's great. The thing is, like, you know, we all want to lose 30 pounds in a week. You know, right. we all want a college degree in, in two months. Right. So the thing is, is just make it bite you. Because the analogy is, you know, I could walk from Las Vegas to New York. Is it possible? 
absolutely is possible. Now, if I said, oh, I'm going to do that in a week or a month or even six months, that would seem a little overwhelming. But if you're headed in the right direction and you're taking small steps in the right direction every day, how could you not get there? And it's the same thing with what people want. And just know that, you know, whatever you want, you can have it. Uh, right. Again, yourself, be clear up little bite-sized chunks and before you know it you're like oh my god i'm i'm a quarter of the way there i'm halfway there and i did it that's cool so um uh, i like that so do you believe in vision boards uh and uh, do you apply that so how would you talk to people about that vision boards so i do and i teach a great class on it i do an exercise maybe one day i'll figure out how to do it because the issue with vision boards is that people are never, or I shouldn't say never, some people aren't able to really tap into the emotion that you really need to activate or use that vision board correctly. So right. what typically happens is, you know, you cut pictures out, I'm gonna cut out a supermodel, a Corvette, a big house and, and right. whatever else. I see it, I walk by it every day. When I go to work, I'm like, I'm gonna get that. But there's really right. no emotion behind it. And, and this is what's missing from people's vision boards. Right. Because you need to be able to tap into that emotion to feel something, to feel like you already have it. And it's difficult for many people to get there on their own. Um, this is where visualization really comes in to sit. What, you make your vision board, but sit with it to a point where you're able to feel something. Because if you right. can't feel it, the vision board is not going to work. And this is where a lot of people, yeah, the vision board didn't work. It was cool to look at, but nothing really happened. <laughs> it's because they're missing the feelings. They're missing the emotion. And you really have to get that, that vibration going. And you can do it on your own, but you really have to feel energized. Do it once. Now when you look at it, when you walk out to on the way to, to work, it's going to trigger that feeling. It's going to trigger that vibration. And right. that's how it really can bring things to you. If you walk by and go, yeah, that's cool. It isn't going to work. Right. That's, that's cool. I, I like what you said because I, times I look at the vision board and say, did I accomplish that? I'm supposed to accomplish in three months. Oh, did I do that now? So you got to keep pushing yourself and, as you say, right, increase the vibration. Oh, before I go to work. Oh, this is what I need to do. So that's cool. I like that. So, Mike, uh, another thing, do you want to reveal, talk about your new book? So, when it's going to be released, and so we, so we know when to expect your new book. Uh, thank you. It should be out uh, probably early next year. It's. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because it's a concept I came up with that that nobody's ever done before, and it's about you know um, changing the way you look at your life, changing the way you look at every day, right, and right. it's it, it's mind blowing. So wow. it's uh, it's going to be good. I'm excited about it. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, do you have any questions for me? Do you have anything you want to give away today? I mean, before you leave. I mean, I, this was a great interview, and I, you have get, given a lot of golden nuggets here. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to give us well, a lot of golden nugget here? Before uh, no, I'd just like to, to thank you for having me, and I'd like to ask you a question, you know, because I appreciate you being such a good interviewer. Because uh, I'm sure that you have a lot of material in your I'd like to back to you and say, you know, what's um, what's one of the best things that you would like to to tell people? Uh, I tell people to believe in themselves. So the most important thing is you do anything is is believing in you and rest will follow. OK, so if you believe in yourself rest will follow so that's that's the only thing I, I i tell people you know what in order to gain confidence you have to go and get that get out of your com comfort zone and do it be transparent um you know be uh be clear you, you don't have to be you see if you see me i don't do makeup or hair i have to look good i have to look pretty in front of the camera i don't care for me is that i don't care what people think about me it's all about what i care about myself it's important for me how do I feel about myself? So that's a piece of advice I would give to people. <laughs> and that's great advice. And you know, one thing I love, I love your passion. And this is one thing that you know you're in the right place when you're so passionate. And you know, what right there and those, and that alone is just very powerful. And the cool thing is, is that you're actually living it. 
And, and that's right. one thing with, you know, I know for me, you know, we're philosophy and these, these concepts, but where does it meet reality? You know, a lot of times people live in this high level and they can spit out all these mantras and these things, but are you living it? Does your life reflect that? Ah, then there's, there's something missing. There's a disconnect. Right, 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 right. That's cool. So, uh, Michael, I want to say uh, you have given a lot of contribution to this channel here and we are growing here as we grow. And I would like to you to be on this uh, webinar again on Friday so we can do it with a couple more people, but we can talk behind the scene. Uh, but I want you to thank for your time, for taking the time to come here and uh, learn the software, learn all these things, learn the questions and all that stuff for, for giving your time. I want to appreciate all your time. So, uh, and I want to thank from everyone, all the audience, all the viewers. I don't see any comments here, but I'm sure people will have questions. So if you want to get in touch with Mike, you can friend him on Facebook. It's Michael Tarby. And uh, you can find his book on Amazon. And I think he has, I've given a link. Or you can go on his website, happyjuicylife.com. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's living, living, uh, big, <laughs> living, living big juicy life com. Um, yes. And if you want to sign signature, sign book from Michael, you can just personal message him and uh, decide where you want to meet and he will sign a book for you, autograph the book for you. So uh, is there any upcoming event, Michael, coming up in Las Vegas? I do have a couple. Um, the best way to, to find out about them would be to friend me on Facebook. And okay. then uh, I post my upcoming events there usually. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you for being with us. And uh, we enjoyed having you here. And, and shukriya. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Janet. Great, great to be with you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Mike. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.